day, everybody. My name is Andrea Cimadoro. I'm the National Development Manager for Cooling System, and welcome to this webinar. Today, the topic is understanding IDAX screw pumps. So with any further ado, let's start. So understanding IDAX screw pump, what we are going to talk about today. So we will touch a little bit on the history of screw pump. We will have an, an opinion, an idea about all the pumps, the detailed, all the anatomy, and we have some application and tips. So let's start with the history of screw pump. Funny but true is the oldest pump in the world. We got traces around the 700, 600 before Christ, when the Egyptian have something made in clay and was like a, a little bucket of clay with some pot and uh, in the pot were moving water from one position to another one. So it was the first non-human operated lifting device. So that's how old the screw pump concept is. Then we have to reach the around the 287 before Christ where Archimede from Syracuse an Italian entrepreneur, I would say, and, and genius, made these uh, things in metal, made with a, with a coarse screw, changed from clay to metal, and the screw was usually used on a, by, operated by hand or in a windmill. But the invention of Archimede, it's actually very strong, or the engineerization of Archimede was very strong, strong to the point that even today, we still have some reference of it. And you can see the image on the left. It's actually a real application in the Netherlands. In the middle, we can see an application in, the, in an adventure park in San Diego in California. And, um, and on the right side, last but not least, we have an application of the, the little screw pump perfectionated by Archimede on a little device which is used mainly for a minimally invasive coronary bypass surgery. So even in the pharmaceutical industry, this type of pump, this type of concept is still actual and is still revolutionary. But stop with history. Let's talk about the science of the screw pump. So where they are coming from? In the positive displacement pump family, we got two different group, the rotary pumps group and the reciprocating pump group. Screw pumps are part of the rotary group, where vein pumps are, where gear pumps are. So this is the definition. And since they are part of this positive displacement pump, let's talk about what mean positive displacement pump. So positive displacement pump, it's a pump that will produce the same flow at a given speed, a given RPM, no matter the discharge pressure that is feeling. On the contrary, negative displacement pump can vary the flow based on the discharge pressure. So what is this feature, this beautiful feature of the positive displacement pump? It means that the screw pumps continue to produce flow until either the line bursts or the pump is severe damage. And so it's constantly pushing and pumping the fluid from one side to the other one of the pump. Therefore, is a, absolutely a must to have a bypass or what we call it an internal relief valve. Now, with the help of uh, a video from a respectful uh, German brand company, I'd like to show you the inside the screw pump what is happening. So as you can see on the video, we got a screw pump, a triple screw pump. We got the main, the main drive, which we call the driver the main screw connected with the shaft of the model, and the two other screw, which we call the follower. So the suction come always in the far point of the pump, so the, and the delivery is always close to the shaft of the electric model. So that's a peculiarity of the screw pump. Remember, the suction is always far away, and then the, the fluid is pulled, and the delivery is very close to the electrical motor and, and flange size. This video is very interesting also because it can show the bypass. So you see the little cavity, the little blue little arrow. When there is an overpressure, we have different pressure setting. The valve open and we got like the bypass channeling opening and bringing the fluid back to the inlet. So I thought this video was very illustrative of the how a screw pump works. 
and that's why we have selected just to to show you today back to our presentation noise and vibration let's talk about that well this uh, what you see on the on the screen is a chart it's a time lapse of vibration and noise so as you can see on a centrifugal pump or on a vein pump we got a lot of noise and we got a lot of vibration and these are completely almost zero on a screw pump. So the screw pump are very good for noise, very quiet and very, very, very low vibration, almost insignificant. So that's a big point of choosing this screw pump. Let's uh, now talk about NPSH. So what's the definition of NPSH? NPSH means net positive suction head. So what is the NPSH A and what is the NPSH R? Let's talk about. So the NPS, this, this value is expressed in meter for water column. And at sea level, 10 meter of water column is actually one atmosphere, which is actually very, very close to one bar. So what happened is that the NPSH available is the absolute pressure at the suction port of the pump. Okay, so that's that's a given. And the require is the minimum pressure required at the suction port from the pump to keep the pump from cavitating. So this is a value that we are going to give to the customer that you know we are happy to supply to you. So what is the must in this game? The absolute should always be bigger than the require. If the absolute is not bigger than the requires, that means that we don't have enough pressure at the suction port, then we got this condition. When the absolute is smaller than the require, we got cavitation. But what is cavitation? Well, cavitation is actually vapor, bubble, air in the pocket, air in the inlet side. So in reality, what is happening is that instead of having fluid at the inlet, we get air in the cavity and air take the place of the fluid. So we got an, somebody else in the mix, uh, which not supposed to be there. And so vapor bubble air, what is creating? It's creating a loud noise. So a screw pump cavitating, you will hear it. You will understand it, that it's cavitating because it's doing a big noise, much different than the normal usage. And if we insist on keeping in this cavitation condition, we can have pitting, we can have damages, we can have loss of flow, uh, flow, bubbling, and ultimately destroying the pump. So what we have to do to avoid cavitation? Well, I always suggest to skip the N and to skip the S on the NPSH and remember P and H. So positive head. That's what a pump need. That's what also a screw pump need. So a screw pump, but also every pump need a positive head. So let's talk about this. What it means a positive? Well, means that if we do an installation like that, where we got our device and we got the pump below our tank or our devices, if it's a gearbox, then we got pH, which goes positive head. And if we have it at tank level or at equipment level, the pump, that's also a positive head. That's also a good pH, positive head. Where we have problem? Well, we have problem when we position the pump above the tank or above our equipment. That's not a positive head. And worst of worst, we if we have a lot of bend, a lot of uh, 90 degree, a lot of long suction line, a lot of complicated and intricate suction line, we hardly have positive head. So that's a no-go and no-no for sure. So let's talk about the screw pump and what you can see inside the screw pump. How is it made? As we saw in the video, we say we got a, a main screw, the driver, and we got the two follower, the left and right. So screw pump can rotate in both direction, can be clockwise or counterclockwise, but not the same pump can do that. So we either have a, a, con a clockwise screw pump or a counterclockwise screw pump. So depending on what the main driver rotation is, the follower are always 
counter rotating to the respect of the driver. We also have a body, we also have some ceiling. The body can be in aluminium, in cast iron, in carbon steel. We also have different type of shape of the follower and the driver for high viscosity, low viscosity. We also have a radial suction or an axial suction. We can change it even at Australian level. We have a normal shaft and we have a hollow shaft. That's also a uh, option. We got different setting of the internal pressure relief valve or what we call it bypass. We got 5 bar, 10 bar, 15 bar, or we got a variable valve sticking out and you can control it from outside. So this is a little bit the anatomy of, of a screw pump. How you size it? That's the question that at this stage of the webinar, everybody say, yeah, but how I can size that? Well, in IDAC, we got a nice software. This is how it look like. And this is what we, in IDAC, we give to a customer. So we give a PDF with all the data of the pump, characterizing the pump. And the first chart on the right, the most important one, I would say, is what we have defined before. So the net positive suction head required by the pump. So at a given RPM, you know what is the require and you make sure that, you know, this is not conflicting with the available one, as we discussed before. So you can see here, we got the performance. In this case, uh, we select a 100 lady liter pump, which gives uh, a request of 4.8 kilowatt. When we look in the catalog of electric motor, there is not such as 4.8 kilowatt motor. So the next closest size is the 5.5 kilowatt. And that's what we recommend for this sizing. We also uh, give the customer the, how viscosity travel in function of flow, how pressure change in function of flow. And the green line is actually the working point of the pump, how we have designed it in this case. You also have pressure versus power and pressure versus flow. So with all this chart, you can actually have the whole behavior of the pump in your installation. And that's a given from IDAC for every screw pump that we offer and we select. Let's go back to our presentation. Why me today? Why head of uh, cooling system talking about screw pump? Well, because in the Australian ACAF, the cooling and lubrication system that we constantly produce out of Melbourne on a daily basis, the screw pump, the HSP pumps are actually the heart of this lubrication system. As you can see, the lubrication system is, let's say, composed by mainly three big components, the pump, the filter, and the cooler. And those three components are equally important for a lubrication system. So it's important to pump the fluid, to filter the fluid, and to cool the fluid. And the other things that we are quite proud of it is that in the design of this lubrication system, the ACAF, Australian ACAF range, we have design the system with triple redundancy, triple safety. What does it mean? It means that we design the system with a bypass on the pump, a bypass on the filter, and a thermal bypass on the cooler. So this gives a good safety feature for the customer. In case anything happen, one, all three can go in bypass or one of the three or two of the three. So the system is totally failure to safe mode design. We also have uh, some compact uh, pump, some compact version of the HSP. Why we use them? Uh, normally we use it when we got installation where the customer or the mine side in Australia don't have enough electrical power or enough electrical lines to power the standard configuration here on the right where we have an electric motor driving the fan and electric motor driving the pump. Some site, they cannot afford to have two electric motors. So then we designed the left type where we put a compact screw pump at the back of the dual shaft electric motor. And this is a good configuration. We can also put it in a sandwich mode where we put the pump between the electric motor and the fan. So we don't use it often, but when applications are challenging, we can use this configuration of HSP IDAC screw pump.
Mining. Mining is our strong sector for lubrication system and therefore the biggest place where we put a lot of screw pump in the market. So over the last 10 years, we have applied to the Australian market something around 2,000 pump in the field and we are quite happy about the, this device and this component. You can see this is a little mini lubrication system where we got our HSP screw pump this is a little lubrication system for a small 200 kilowatt gearbox. Also, we have the bigger version. This is a big lubrication system. Here we are talking about 2.5 megawatt. Same uh, concept, same technology. Screw pump, double filtration, and a big cooler. We also can do a low viscosity application. So this is actually a lubrication system for an industrial magnet, especially we work with a lot of uh, Victorian OEM. They produce a suspended electromagnet. And before we seen high viscosity application gearbox, here we see low viscosity application magnet, hydraulic oil, magnet oil for electrical industrial magnet. This is the way or this is the answer of IDAC when it comes to double redundancy. So some stringent mining uh, specification require double redundancy on pumps. And this is the way and this is the IDAC answer on double redundancy. We just put two screw pump and we put a special connection so that if something goes wrong on one pump, the other pump can take over. So this is the double redundancy design from IDAC on lubrication system skids. We also can use the screw pump for dispensing unit when we need to just deliver the fluid somewhere in a factory and having an, a good filtration rating, we can use this little dispensing unit. Oil and gas. Why oil and gas? Because we want to show that oil and gas is one of the toughest uh, sector that we have in Australia with a lot of uh, regulation, a lot of specification, a lot of uh, challenging feature to meet. And having said that, we managed to produce an API 614 lubrication system where we have used screw pump. So we are quite proud of it. Of course, Due to the legislation and due to the oil and gas tough sector, we're talking about a full a cast iron screw pump for this application. Also there, we like to, to show that, you know, even in the oil and gas, with a two screw pump, we can solve the demand of double redundancy or the request from the spec on double redundancy. Last but not least, pulp and paper sector. The pulp and paper sector is a sector where gearbox are heavily contaminated with water. So for a few OEM in Australia, we have designed this little lubrication system, as you can see with a, with a little screw pump, an excellent IDAC Aquamicron filtration. Aquamicron filter is a special filter from IDAC where it separates the water from the oil. As we know in cooling system and in IDAC, the best situation where you can have the oil separating the water is when actually the oil is cold. So what we do here is we pump this oil with a screw pump, we send it to a brace plated exchanger, we cool it down, and then when it's cooled down, we pass it through an aquamicon filter to separate the water from the oil. So this is an excellent little uh, lubrication system where uh, a lot of uh, OEM and end user on the pulp and paper industry are quite happy about that. So let's be practical now. Let's talk about the real things. Let's talk about the tips. So suppose we need to install a pump. So first of all, keep it in alignment, keep the alignment, make the pump living in a flat condition and if you are going to install the pump and the motor yourself make sure of the alignment of the shaft and the flange and everything so that's rule number one number two check the oil temperature check the oil temperature on your system you know don't do this on a crazy cold day do the first installation where the oil is happy is around the 20 to 40 degree in a normal condition Next thing is check the rotation. In every screw pump that we supply in the Australian market, there is a sticker with the rotation of the pump. And check that arrow and make sure that your electric motor is in agreement with that rotation on the sticker. 
Then, last but not least, prime the pump. Please, prime the pump. Pl prime any type of pump. I agree that the screw pump have got a kind of self-priming feature built into it, but let's not exaggerate. So any pump like to have a needle prime, at least for the first start. And then check the hose, check the hose are connected properly, there's no leak, and then a gentle start. That's, uh, I'll stretch this point. Don't start the pump with full throttle, just do a gentle start, check the rotation by checking it on, off, and then after you can go and start your full system. What is really important, we actually and kindly disencourage the use of single phase motor on couple with direct couple or bell couple with screw pump. Why is that? Because the single phase motor don't have the torque authority to drive the pump. And especially if the fluid is high viscosity, it's really a no-no. But in general, don't couple the screw pump with a single phase motor. That's given. And make sure that you, if you purchase the electric motor, read the catalog, read our data sheet, make sure that you buy exactly the right motor for that screw pump. Sounds a bit dumb, but you can be surprised how many mail and how many phone calls we got where people tried to couple the screw pump with an electric motor and they bought the wrong things. So simple, but place, place attention into it. So another important thing, don't think that screw pump or one type of screw pump can be the same for a low viscosity or high viscosity oil. Yes, they are good for a wide range, but they are specifically built and designed for us one type of fluid. So specify the fluid to us and don't change it. And don't think that the high viscosity fluid can handle easily a low viscosity fluid and vice versa. So definitely a no-no there. Now i like to give you some example. This is a nice installation from partner of us. And nice installation, nice filter, nice motor, nice screw pump. But we don't know after that what is going to be the suction line. So be very, very careful how you design your suction line. And definitely don't do like these guys. You see, they put the pump vertical wrong already. They put a 90 degree chalk here at the suction line, it's already a big problem. And they put a big long hose that we don't know how long is going to be. So that's a good way to kill the suction line of the pump and to kill the pump and to potentially make you cavitating the pump. So this is a second example or example three is in this case, the guy was a bit better than the previous guy where doesn't have a 90 degree. It's definitely better to have a little big uh, S hose. Hydraulic hose are already much better than rigid hose. But again, this hose, how long it is, God knows. So be careful with the long hose. Be careful with the 90 degree bend. Be careful with the rigid pipe. And be careful how you position the pump when you do something like that. So... Either can help you, definitely. So if you want to have a screw pump in your system or you are keen to give it a go and try a screw pump where, for example, a lot of other pumps have failed, or if you have like a lab or like you have an application where noise, it's really important, give it a go to a screw pump and you will not be disappointed. So we need the fluid type, we need the viscosity, we need the operating temperature, we need a minimum temperature, cold start design and suction design is a paramount, is a key point of having an epi screw pump, the operating pressure and the suction line characteristics. So this is what we need, six parameter, and we can help you after that. So let's uh, wrap it up, let's conclude. So what are good, the screw pump? Well, they can handle a wide range of liquid viscosity, okay? But this doesn't mean that this pump is being okay for any type of fluid that are in the market. So if you are not confident, give us the fluid data sheet. We got chemical engineers in our company. We can check the compatibility and maybe we can recommend another type of screw pump cast iron, special treatment on the screw like nitration and Teflon treatment, and we can make the bespoke pump for your fluid. 
low noise, low mechanical vibration. I've seen it at the beginning of the presentation, but those are the two fundamental plus for this pump. Very, very low vibration and very, very low noise. It's, there's not another pump that can match these two parameters, like the screw pump. Highly volumetric efficient, cost and flow, regardless the pump pressure. So positive displacement pump. And don't forget, regarding the pump pressure, cost and flow rate. And last but not least, if you do all this correctly, and if you've done a good suction design, you had a, an happy pump performing satisfactory for a long time. And when I say long time, can be up to 10 years or more. We got installation in Australia, which we have done it 10 years ago, and they are happy working absolutely with no problem in very harsh environment, in mining sector, and they give absolutely no problem. So thank you very much uh, for your attention on this webinar. Don't forget to register our upcoming webinar. There are a lot on our webpage or on our social media. And thank you for the attention again. And um, until the next webinar.